In a world where we constantly compare ourselves to other people through social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok, it's easy to feel bad about the way you look or to be unhappy with your physique. The mental anguish caused by this constant comparison can wreak havoc on your mental health and cause you to walk around feeling insecure, stressed, and exhausted. It's not hard to come across a barrage of podcasts, social media posts, and self-help gurus who leverage this feeling that you have to try to sell you something. Whether it's a new online course on how to get in shape, an app, or some weird diet meal plan that you need to pay them in order to access, the online fitness industry is honestly pretty predatory, and I absolutely hate it. In fact, a lot of these people intentionally create barriers to entry that make it to where you have to pay them in order to get the results that you want. Whether it's a guy on TikTok only giving you part of their advice and charging you for the rest of it, or a healthy recipe website trying to charge you a membership cost to finish viewing the recipe that you were planning on cooking, this constant need for people to extract money from you in order to make you feel better about yourself genuinely irks me. There's a reason that drugs like Ozempic are worth billions of dollars and that the weight loss industry as a whole is worth over $90 billion in 2024. There is a lot of money to be made by keeping you out of shape and then charging you to get back in shape. And they're all in it together. Food companies are engineering foods that are going to taste good but make you unhealthy. Drug companies are producing drugs that are going to make you lose weight that you put on from these foods. And then the food companies are creating products that work alongside these drugs to make sure that you still consume what they want you to consume while under the illusion of taking steps to better yourself through weight loss drugs. These companies are charging you every step of the way, confusing you, spreading misinformation, and keeping you exactly where you are for as long as they can. Trust me, my diet used to be pretty terrible, and just from how much I've drastically changed it within the past year and a half, I feel like an entirely new person. I can see through the facade of lies that these corporations are telling you, and I promise you, losing weight is actually a pretty straightforward process. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it's easy, and I'm not saying that it's going to happen overnight, but the science speaks for itself, and what I'm about to tell you works. I have friends who've lost dozens of pounds from doing exactly this, and you really don't even need to know much about nutrition, dieting, or biology to understand how it all works. It's going to take some time and it's going to be hard, but my goal with this video is to provide you with some hope and insight into how losing weight actually works so that you can take the steps necessary to change your life for the better and spread that positive energy into the world. Losing weight will help you feel better mentally, physically, and even socially, and I genuinely believe that it's one of the most important things you can do to improve your life on every single level. But like I said, a lot of people don't really know where to start. So here's my framework for losing weight and getting in shape. Step 1. You need to start paying attention to what you eat. In our hyper-productive, efficient culture, our focus is always on doing things as quickly as we can, in the easiest way possible. While this is good, and it allows you to provide for yourself and your family, it tends to create some really unhealthy habits. And a lot of people don't even realize what they eat on a daily basis. Can you sit down and name every single thing you ate today? What about yesterday? If you can, it's going to take some time because you probably weren't even thinking about it. You were just following your primal urges. I am hungry. I eat food. But the reality of how dieting works is that you really need to understand what exactly you're putting into your body before you even start to think about losing weight. So it's time to consume consciously. Don't eat out of habit, don't eat impulsively, plan out your meals in advance and make it to where you eat exactly what you planned and nothing else. My grandma is the absolute worst when it comes to impulsively eating. When she sees snacks on the table, she's going to eat some of those snacks 100% of the time. I'm convinced that most of the time she doesn't even want the snacks and she just eats them because she sees them. And she's always been upset about her inability to lose weight. Losing weight is an equation, and if you don't know the first part of the equation, aka what you're actually eating, there's no point in even trying to lose weight. Start by doing that. Spend a week or so and take account of everything you put into your body. What you're consuming will probably surprise you, and there will most likely be a lot of things that you never even accounted for when you were trying to think about your diet. Don't worry about specifics, but pay attention to what your eating habits actually are, and you'll set the foundation for losing weight. Now that you know what you're consuming, it's time to think about that formula that I mentioned earlier. Losing weight is simply a balance of calories. If you burn more calories than you eat, you will lose weight. If you eat more calories than you burn, you will gain weight. 
The processes happening inside your body are complicated, but no matter what, this simple equation is in fact how it works. Calories are energy, and when you don't consume enough energy, your body pulls from its energy reserves to fuel you. And these reserves are primarily composed of fat. So, your body breaks down this fat to use for energy, resulting in fat being burned and weight being lost. But here's something that a lot of people forget about. Calories burned doesn't just mean calories burned in exercise. No, in fact, your body uses calories for everything. Watching this video is burning calories. Eating food is burning calories. Sleeping is burning calories. These stores of energy are how you do every single action in your life. Depending on your height, your weight, and some other factors, you can kind of get an estimate of how many calories you burn without exercising every day. This is known as your maintenance calories, or the amount of calories that you need to eat every day without exercise to maintain your current weight. I'll put a link in the description, and you can use this calculator to get a general idea of what your maintenance calories are. This helps you to get the other side of that equation that I just mentioned. We will talk about exercise in a minute, but for now, let's just pretend that you don't exercise at all. So, take this maintenance calorie amount and reduce it by about 500 calories per day, and you will lose weight. Period. If you reduce it by more, you will lose weight faster, but just having less calories going in than are coming out means that you will lose weight. Again, this is without exercising, so even with a sedentary life, if you eat less calories than this maintenance number, your body will pull from your fat reserves and your weight will decrease. But the thing is, you don't want to just sit around all day. Weight loss goals aside, being sedentary is just really bad for your overall health. If you want to live a long life, you need to move around, so I definitely recommend incorporating exercise into your dieting plan, both to make the weight loss process easier and to stay in shape and live a long life. If you don't exercise at all, start by walking. Walk for 30 minutes or an hour every day. The average person will burn between 200 and 350 calories per hour during a walk, so if you start by walking one hour a day, then it'll make it to where you don't have to cut down your calories as much to lose weight. For example, if you find out that your maintenance calories are 2,000, and you burn between 200 and 350 calories per hour from your walk every day, now, your maintenance calorie number has increased to between 2200 and 2350, meaning that as long as you eat less than that, you will lose weight. And this is just walking, the bare minimum. You can definitely lose weight by doing this, but in order to do it more efficiently, you should definitely exercise more. If you run every day for 30 minutes, you can burn double what you would burn from walking, making it even easier to eat less calories than you burn and lose weight. Now, there is a catch. The bigger you are, the faster you burn calories from exercising. If your body is larger, that is more mass that you have to move around, which means that it requires more energy to move that mass. So, this is why you see a lot of people lose a lot of weight in the early days of dieting, and then it slows down as time goes on and they get smaller. If you're in the really early stages of losing weight and you aren't quite comfortable working out around other people, definitely start with simple walks and maybe some occasional light runs and build your way up to doing full cardio training like longer runs or maybe even biking. It's extremely valuable to add weightlifting into your exercise routine where the fat that you're burning is being replaced by muscle, but like I said, if you're in the very early stages, don't even worry about that yet. The focus of this video is dieting and building muscle muscle is a topic for another video if you're interested. But regardless of the size and the speed at which you lose weight, just focus on being in a calorie deficit and even if it goes off slowly, you will start to see some progress. But still, all of this is only half of the formula. We need to talk about the first half, what you're putting into your body. Like I said, it's important to track what you eat so that you know where you're starting out. I use an app called MyFitnessPal and I do pay for premium because it allows you to scan the barcodes of the foods in the store or in your fridge and it automatically records the calorie count in those foods, but you can enter it manually if you have time and it is free if you do it that way. Anyways, with an idea of what you are actually eating now, it's time to cut out the empty, processed garbage foods that are sneaking in calories to your diet that you don't expect. In simplest terms, if you want to lose weight, it's a lot easier to do so if you only eat fresh, natural foods. Basically, any food that exists in nature and has not been altered by some form of manufacturing. I'm not saying that you only need to eat apples and raw steak, but the closer that your foods are to this natural form, the more nutrient-dense these foods are and the better your body utilizes the nutrients in these foods. 
Processed foods have a lot of sugar and oils in them, which are both very calorie-dense ingredients that make you end up eating more than you expected without feeling full. That's why it's so easy to eat an entire bag of potato chips. But have you ever tried to eat four entire potatoes? It's the same food, but because the calories aren't so heavily doused with salt, sugar, and oils, your body gets full and can't eat as much of them as easily. Processed foods are often called hyperpalatable foods. The engineered combination of salt, sugar, and fat trigger cravings in our bodies and actually override our natural instincts to stop eating. This is because as we evolved as humans, food didn't used to be infinite like it is now. When we came across a calorie-dense, fat, sugar, or salt-filled food, we needed to eat it to survive, to put on that extra fat so that next time, when we don't find food, we could still make it. But the combinations of fats, sugars, and salt found in processed foods today don't really exist in nature. You've never seen someone sit down and eat 10 entire steaks impulsively because of how good they taste. These foods just aren't natural, and your body doesn't really know how to react to something with that combination of flavors, salts, and fats. So stick to whole, naturally occurring foods, and you won't have the urge to impulsively eat like you do with chips or candy. Also, these naturally occurring foods, eggs, nuts, meats, vegetables, fruit, rice, grains, beans, etc., will keep you full for longer. Because they aren't empty foods filled with empty ingredients like seed oils and sugars, ingredients that provide no actual nutritional value, they work better at keeping you feeling satisfied, and you just simply won't be able to eat as much as you would if you were eating the things that were processed. And this doesn't just mean chips or cookies. Fast food, frozen meals, chicken nuggets, store-bought baked goods, even a lot of the bread that you see in the grocery store in the United States is extremely processed, and again, engineered to make you want more. So if you can fill a majority of your daily calories with these natural foods, this won't be as big of a problem for you anymore. And as you do this, your cravings for these unhealthy foods will begin to decrease drastically. I used to eat a lot of fast food, a lot of fried foods, a lot of sweets, and things like that. But over the last one and a half years, I've switched to an almost entirely whole food diet, opting for foods that don't have a lot of added ingredients, and I don't even really crave those bad things anymore. I used to love Chick-fil-A, but now after eating it, I feel like I want to throw up. I used to love sweet tea, but I can't even drink a full one without feeling sick now. I'm not gonna lie, I still really like ice cream, and I don't think that's gonna change, but the fact that these other foods are gone definitely is a lot better. We've adapted to enjoy these processed, greasy, fried, sugary foods because this is what we've been eating for so long. Our body sees it as the new normal. But once you refresh your body with the way that we've eaten as humans for all of human history, the artificially produced versions of these foods don't seem as good as they once did. So this is a great way to ensure that you aren't eating too many calories and combining it with exercising regularly and burning more calories makes it to where you can easily consume less than you burn, leading to you losing weight. Like I said, not everyone loses weight at the same pace. It'll be harder for some people to drop in weight compared to others, and there are quite a few factors that causes that to be the case. But without a doubt, if you're in a caloric deficit every single day, you will lose some form of weight no matter what. The size of that deficit is what determines how quickly you lose the weight. So cut out the stuff that's causing you to eat more than you plan, exercise, and keep at it for an extended period of time, and I promise you, you will lose weight. I think our culture has made it to where people expect it to be easy to lose weight. You do this one step thing and 25 days later you lose 50 pounds. This is just not a realistic way to look at dieting. Dieting shouldn't be looked at as a fad or a quick way to reach your goals, but a lifestyle. If you diet and then stop when you lose the weight, you will gain it back. So it's important to change your lifestyle, change the things that you eat, and stick with it as a new way of life to maintain your health, your weight, and your happiness. I genuinely do feel that it's a lot easier to be happy if you're happy with how you look. Forget doing it for girls, forget doing it for social media, do it because you want to feel better about yourself internally, and that should be incentive enough to stick with it through the entire process. I hope this talk helped you to think about dieting in a different perspective. Obviously, it's a little more nuanced than this, and there are some other things to talk about like building muscle, the actual foods and ingredients that you should be eating, and things like that. If you want me to dive into any of these topics further, let me know in the comments, and if you enjoy this video, consider buying me a coffee using the link in the description. I'm kind of a fiend for coffee, and your support really helps me to sit down and think about these videos. Good luck on your diet, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.